What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's Ryan here and today I want to talk about why I made the switch from React.js to Next.js. So first thing I'm going to do is go over the new user interface since I'm now using Material UI and it's entirely redesigned. Then I'm going to go over some of the code to show you what Next.js looks like compared to React.js. Then I'm going to go over some of the architectural changes. So same as before, we can add custom text. We can choose a font. We can click here to randomize the font. We can adjust the font size to make it bigger or smaller. And we can click here at the bottom to reset everything. And we can drag an image here to upload our own custom image as a background image. And we can remove that, reset everything. And last but not least is my favorite where we can paste a YouTube URL. Once it's loaded, it'll tell us how many screenshots it grabbed. We can check these out. And now we can scroll through these and pick one as our background image, kind of like this one. Cool, that looks pretty nice. I think this one here looks pretty nice. Let's try that. And that quickly, we have a nice, beautiful thumbnail generated by Thumbgen.io. So previously, the front end was built with 100% pure React.js, and this is what the HTML looks like for that. There's really no semantic content here. So when a search engine crawls the page and tries to look for useful information, well, there is no useful information here. So this is why I switched to Next.js. So this is what the new front end looks like. All of the elements that you see on the page are actually rendered through HTML initially. And this is what Next.js allows you to do. Now, this isn't just good for SEO. It's also good for performance because when a user initially loads that page, they immediately have some content to look at and then everything sort of pops into place rather than a pure React app where it has to wait until the entire chunk loads. And, you know, that could be anywhere from a few kilobytes to a few megabytes, depending on the size of the app. So from a code standpoint, Next.js looks almost identical to React.js. Here I have the home component, just standard state management stuff, a use effect hook to grab some data from the API and some layout stuff. So it looks pretty much the same as React.js, except there's this one thing I added here called get server side props. So if you export this Next.js function from your page component, what it'll do is it'll run this logic on the back end. And here I have it actually fetching the templates beforehand, and then it injects that into the home page props. So if you actually look at the HTML for the page, you can see that the templates get preloaded here into the HTML, which is nice because as soon as the page loads, that data is available without needing to make an additional API request. But then once the page is loaded, I can make additional API requests here and then set that in the state. So after really digging into Next.js and seeing how sort of magical it is, I kind of feel like this represents the next phase of web development, right? In phase one, we had just static HTML pages. Then after that, we had PHP where we could dynamically fetch data and render that to the page. Then we had single page applications which were great in terms of that really native sort of dynamic experience, but then not that great for SEO. And now we've got this sort of hybrid approach where you get the best of both worlds. You get statically rendered elements on the page, which is good for semantics and SEO and all that, which is, is just good for the web in general, but it's all still React.js, so we could do all the cool dynamic stuff that we do with React. So this is what the original architecture looked like. The user would fetch the single page application, right, React.js from the Firebase hosting, which is really just static file hosting. And then every API request would go through the load balancer in Kubernetes, hit the API, which would talk to the thumbnail service and all of that stuff. Check out the previous video if you wanna see more about that. This is what the new and improved architecture looks like. So first we have the screenshot service. This is in charge of extracting screenshots from the YouTube video when you paste in that URL. The Next.js server is actually hosted in the Kubernetes cluster alongside API and all the other services. 
And the Next.js server can make requests to the API when it needs to pre-render a page. Now, once the user has that page loaded up, it'll act like a normal React app and it'll make API requests directly to the API. So yeah, I really like Next.js so far. It's pretty intuitive to use. I was a little reluctant at first to use it because I don't like big opinionated frameworks. But if you don't want to give up the React.js ecosystem, but you still want to have something that's SEO optimized, then you kind of have no choice but to use a framework like Next.js. And a lot of big companies are using it. It's pretty battle tested at this point. So yeah, I'm going to continue using Next.js, see how it works out. If I see anything cool, I'll let you guys know. So one last thing I want to show you is I pulled up Thumbgen.io on my iPhone and surprisingly it looks kind of nice. Um, I didn't even really optimize it for mobile. I did make some things responsive, but I didn't really test it out that much and it still looks pretty good. So hey, maybe give it a shot on your iPhone or Android. Let me know what you think. So hey, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe and support a little YouTuber like myself. And thank you for watching.